life stealer now uh banned out so one of the carries that does a little bit better against this fan able to fight into him at least for the duration of um yeah i mean if you stay on net if you stay like pretty even on net worth it's definitely life stealer favorite for sure interesting a grim stroke huh okay we've seen this with sven actually if a couple times recently the ink swell into Stormhammer is pretty hilarious. Uh, it is. Uh, what we saw, they called it like the checker hop or something like that. You I just uh, no from idea. One to the next. Yeah, I can come up with something better than that. You have to give me a bit of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you're good. You're good. Do your thing. We can always pay the interns or ask the interns. I know you've got a couple yourself. I can always hit up Jerry and see if he's uh, he's got any like I... ideas for us. I keep them like there's like a dozen over in the next room, just okay. like boxed together. Yeah, have maps them, on, of course. Yeah, have them brainstorm something for him. Yeah, but they uh, <laughs> come up with me, uh, come up for me. I told them not to interrupt me during the drafting phase, though. So yeah. I have to get back to you on that one. Oh, gosh, that makes sense. Minute, Thirty seconds here. I can, uh, I'd probably pick a support before grabbing their next carry here. Wait for this next tier on Beast Coast to come out. So. Clockwork has grabbed out four and fives available. Dyer's turn to pick Dusk. They grab Tusk. I like it. This is a good hero. Very strong, very fun lane hero. The question is, do you run it in the th three or the... Like, you could run this three or mid, technically, if you want to run the Lashrak in the off lane against the Sven. There's a yeah. lot of options here. You can, you can run this as a core Tusk, or you can just pick it as a support here. Five seconds remain. With the I clockwork, think, I'm leaning towards its a core. I think they'll take Viper now on Arkosh. Beastmaster, huh? Yeah. Uh, they're looking to play this one a little bit quicker than it seems. Beastmaster isn't somebody you see as much of lately. I mean, he's still fairly, fairly good in lane. You still build a Necronomicon on him a lot of the time, but uh, he plays faster, plays Dota, uh, faster paced Dota than he used to. He plays a lot more with his team with that inner beast aura. So we'll probably see another aura hero and somebody else who likes fighting with the team in the early Vlads on Beastmaster. They start moving around with a group of five heroes. They have tons of catch just from Earth Spirit alone. But uh, I want to talk Arkosh's draft. Uh, they got a bunch of random pieces to the puzzle. Tusk doesn't have the best synergy with Clockwork, in my opinion. That is true. Yeah, it is a little bit uh, anti-synergy for sure. One thing that is funny, though, is you can trap people multiple ways now, right? Yeah. yeah, you do have multiple ways to trap people. Um, the cogs and then the ice shards are just never going anywhere. By the time you break the cogs, walk forward, ice shards come out afterwards. You can hold them in place for Leshrac to do his thing fairly easily. Um, the Tusk save with the Leshrac does feel pretty good. I mean, being able to hold him in Snowball while he's damaging people with his Diabolic Edict and his Pulse Nova is great. Tidehunter is a wonderful pick here. Uh, it's not as commonly picked up, but great against a melee hero. So Sven, Earth Spirit, Beastmaster, all going to struggle. Nice, yeah. He's able to clean up uh, a lot. The Beastmaster's menagerie once he gets that Necro book just with his anchor smash. Yeah, and this is a, it's typically you just see the Vlad's build right on Tidehunter for the sustain and then like probably a pipe or something just to give him uh, as much survivability as possible. I don't think we're going to be seeing a Blink Dagger come out of this Tidehunter very soon because it doesn't look like Arkosh is going to be relying on him for the initiation. I mean, you have Snowball and Hookshot. I think that's their idea. And the, the Tidehunter is just going to be like this Aura bot and uh, trying to get a good Ravage off when possible. Yeah, I think they'll save Snowball a lot of time for whatever target gets roared, though. Uh, just be able to hold them during that stun duration. I mean, Leshrac is going to have his work cut out for him. You don't want them to be able to get on top of him. And uh, I think Snow yeah, Snowball is one of the saves that can be used against the uh, Stormhammer on Sven, even when it's got the Dispel. Just because you're hidden during the duration. Yeah. Ember There's the spirit. Ember ban. I was actually curious if Arkosh was going to take Ember. Um, but then the Tidehunter kind of made it a little bit less likely. I mean, we might see something crazy out from them again. I'm not sure. I, I think... I'm going to be honest. Beast Coast, between the two of these guys, they're just uh, they're the better team here. I mean, look what they did to them in that last game. Five seconds remain. I mean, our cryptic, uh, not convinced, it seems. You'll see. Beast Coast, top of South America, and our cost, just a bunch of uh, non humans, it looks like, having to rely on methods like getting drops of repair kits when they're losing to yeah. win. I mean, they're just real. I mean, 
like you you you're kind of leaning more towards the theory that they're reptilians i think they're just an unknown entity that have embodied people and stolen their lives but why would you embody a furry dude you never know they're weird <laughs> yeah furries <laughs> <are>. <laughs> Uh, uh, they banned the gyro wow that's a hero we haven't seen in a while but it is good against the Beastmaster, and actually synergizes pretty good with the tide hunter and the shrek yeah you're able to, to do a lot of damage the called in is always going to land on top of uh the ravage and you get those heroes and hold them into place while they get hit by the flat cannon so i want to make sense covering all their bases here Five, it's again it feels like arkosh have a, a very difficult in a situation where they don't really know what to pick for that one position dyer's turn Drow Ranger. Okay, that's actually pretty good. Uh, it's mm, hard to say. Sven's still going to be able to get on top of you. You do have an amazing early game lineup. Uh, yeah. Clock doesn't fit into this one as well, nor does Tide Hunter because they both. Well, Tide Hunter's going to want to play a little bit more defensively. Void. And Void Spirit, I hear that jumps on the yeah, back line. Chris Luck. Fairly well with people. And that makes saving people with Snowball so much harder. I mean, once you get the Agnum Scepter, the two charges of that AoE silence. They're going to struggle to deal with this. Yeah, we saw we saw earlier, you know, how good Void Spirit was at getting on top of the Dry Ranger. Granted, he had a lot of help in the form of, like, a super farmed Weaver in a Nature's Prophet, but Chris Luck can definitely gap close, and once Sven has Ags, it becomes even more difficult. Uh, yeah. I really, really like Beast Coast's draft once again, but Arkosh Gaming, uh, this one makes more sense to me than last game, I think. Mm hmm so we'll see game number two here between Beast Coast and Arkosh. Uh, about to be underway, honestly. What do you think, Neff? Which, which one are you leaning towards? I'm putting, I'm hedging my bets on Beast Coast again. I mean, look at what I just said. Well, look at what they did to them in the last game, Arkosh Gaming. They don't possibly stand the chance, not unless odds are heavily skewed in their favor. So we'll see what kind of uh, things these reptilians try to pull this game. But uh, I told the admin to keep an eye on them. No funny business. Yep, yep. I'm with you. I'm with you on this one. I'm leaning towards Beast Coast. I think Chris Luck's Void Spirit should do pretty darn good this game. It's not bad against Lashrak in the mid lane. You don't have the ability to mitigate a lot of the damage from Lightning Storm um, and stuff like that. But uh, you did one of the things you did point out earlier was when you play these like spirit heroes that want to rotate, you just lose your tower to Lashrak. So you will have to be uh, conscious of that. Yeah. Oh, uh, we'll see how quickly this Leshrac is able to, to play or if they sit somebody in front of the tower and he's not able to do anything. I mean, they don't have anybody that's that great at sitting far forward here on uh, Beast Coast. That is one of the major issues I see with their draft. They could the just get the right, like have fun teams. I wish no luck to Arkosh Gaming. I'll be honest. Could they even know the idea of luck? Yeah, look at Goat. Silence, he says. Absolutely disgusting. No respect for the game. No respect for good sportsmanship, these players. Like I said, I think these are all foreign concepts. I don't think they even understand what that means. You can you can say, hey, can you please be a good sport? And those words mean nothing to them. Well, at least Gremlin is uh, wisened up. Knock on boots of speed is his first item into the off lane here. There's a quelling blade. Realize that uh, getting last hits might be a, a viable strategy. Yeah. Who would have guessed? Uh, Crow, Gremlo working on, uh, doing some serious damage to Chris Luck here. He's got to simulate, but can he make it to the low ground? Absolutely not. Oh. You know, that's going to be first blood on over to the Drow Ranger, and that is a fantastic way to start the game for Arkosh. All right, I'll give it up. They managed to find, uh, there's a fine Void Spirit there, and he's forced to put his first point in Dissimulate as well. Generally, you want to go Resident Pulse and Aether Revenant your first two levels, so already he's going to be at a massive disadvantage. He's going to walk down. He's thinking about walking down mid, but he's going to use a Teleport, so that's another 90 goals. Economy on Beast Coast in shambles. Yeah, this, uh, this, this, is, this is the best possible scenario here. Drow's going to go bottom. Obviously, does have a favorable lane to begin with against Beastmaster. It is very difficult for Beastmaster to play this lane. Um, a lot of this is going to come down to Schofield trying to pull this creep wave and uh, getting it away from Pale Horse on this Drow Ranger. Some comes out on the Chris Luck, so already having an even worse time here. Got himself extra regen after he went down to start, though. Backpacks it up uh, afterwards, so. You know, so Leshrac is going to do some heavy harass to him. He just needs to survive the initial uh, 
God, I think first couple of levels, once he's denied. Mm. If he if he goes through a lot of uh, mana here on this split earth, if he's uh, early harassed and most of his mana pool here, I think Chris Luck will have an easier time. It's just a bit easier for him to pull aggro and finish off these creeps with his right clicks due to being a melee hero. I would expect him to actually go two points early into this lightning storm, right? Like, it is a lot of damage um, that Void Spirit cannot mitigate at all. Yep. Pretty mana efficient uh, ability, 130 for 100 mana. Split Earth, quite a bit more damage, but not as light, not as easy to hit. Yeah, especially at these early levels, you only have 150 radius. Yeah. We can take a look elsewhere, though. Uh, mid lane, I. I thought Chris was about to dive there. I was going to say, not a lot of action there. We'll look bottom instead. See what uh, Earth Spirit and Clockwork were up to. Ooh, bottom lane, Pale Horse. Nice boulder kick, but they could potentially turn it around. They have Cogs and the uh, Battery Assault, but they're not going to risk it. They're going to be fine. Ooh, mid lane missed Earth Split there on Kane's Volvus. He tried to high roll the Dissimilate, but didn't end up working out. They have mana regen. Ooh. Jerry missed a kill top lane. This one onto Crow. Well played there by Stinger and Hector. That is the uh, classic Inkswell Stormhammer combination we were talking about. Yeah, uh, he took a little bit of extra. Did he die to the neutral? He did not die. He took a little bit of extra damage from the uh, tomato, actually. There. Thunderclap him. Oh, man. Oh, even more bursts. Even the neutrals are against them. They hate Arkosh Gaming. Oh, yeah. It oh, seems like that's the case. Yeah. I love watching uh, the way Schofield is playing this bottom lane. He's just boulder kicking to secure range creeps <laughs> from, like, the tree line. It's really funny. Um, yeah, Goat's just, again, trying to get on top of Whisper, but he's just making space. A great side lane pull here from Schofield, though. This is really not what you want to do. Or what you want to see if you're the draw ranger. You want to be able to keep this uh, lane pulled back as far as possible. We don't pull you out of position, but... Yeah, Ghost's just going to go aggressive, start harassing this Beastmaster. What's going on Only top one. lane here? Ooh. Nice dodge by Crow. Yeah, he's just going to walk away after this. He's got boots of speed. Sven's not able to catch up with him just yet. But uh, on the bottom lane there, you know, he doesn't want to commit too far forward on uh, Clockwork. I mean, only one point in the battery assault means you're not doing too much damage. Kenny's Wolfus really needs this uh, bottle before this four-minute room. He's, he, he doesn't oh. have it quite yet. Go feel the baited goat out there. Kicked him back. The level one battery assault that he had right there. He ends up wasting that mana. Four-minute rotations. Yep. Earth Spirit coming into the bottom. We have Tusk top lane. We'll see which side it decides to spawn on. Chris Luck obviously has his bottle already in its bottom. An arcane rune. You have no way to stop this other than Snowball. And that might have just... Eh, he'll be fine. Schofield doesn't really have kill potential solo. But yeah, refilling Chris Luck's bottle is huge. Oh, they get a nice split Earth in the mid lane. He's taking a lot of damage. Tag team is available. He will pop it. Dissimulate is there up onto the high ground. Does have the bottle recharges coming in. Ooh, you lose Gremlo top. Again, the same combination, the Inkswell and that Stormhammer. Well, you have so many different uh, stuns and slows coming out that your Kraken shell isn't going to do as much. And it's uh, only level one, so 600 damage threshold, only 14 damage block. I mean, you're only getting it half the time. The other half, your passive uh, melee damage block is going to come into play there. Uh, Sven doesn't even need... The Grimstroke in the lane with him anymore. It's okay. You can go do stuff elsewhere. I can take care of Grumlo. Bottom lane. Very, very nice roll there on that battery assault frog because it cancels uh, Schofield's uh, rolling boulder in the middle of an entire creep wave and a uh, creep camp. They get themselves a nice little kill. They'll pick up the bounty rune bottom on Tusk and they still have their own. So it should go two and two here as uh, Canis Volpus to Furry and rotate over to refill his bottle. I hate this guy. Gets himself raindrops against uh, against the Void Spirit, especially now that they're getting close to level six. Schofield, did he teleport in? He did. He dropped his bottle at the wrong time there. He didn't end up getting the refill. Really? Rookie mistake there by Schofield and Chris Luck. Yeah, that's not good. What's going on here? Oh, nice roll up to the high ground to drop a award. Bottom lane, Goat just uh, 
abusing some nice little boars, but it's fine. He'll just walk away. Not surprised. Only an absolute monster could harass animals like this. Ooh, Storm and or er, uh, Split Earth off the mark in the mid lane, but Chris Luck, yeah, that is the Lashrak. That's the power of this hero. Once you get to level, I mean, level six, the Pulse Nova is an insane amount of damage. He picks up a Haste Rune as well, and now Lashrak is a killing machine. This is where this hero becomes very scary. Yeah, I mean, he hit the Astral's death. They just wasn't able to get away. I only caught the tail end of that team fight. Thankfully, the catapult went down at the same time that uh, Void Spirit did, so they're not able to shove the tower with it. But he's out for blood now. He wants to get a kill in the top lane, but Hector, he's not going to fall for this one. This man has a 200 carry IQ. He plays like it's still he's 2014, gone. but my God, is this guy's map awareness good. Yeah, Goes speaking of uh, map awareness, bottom lane, a three-man rotation. Goat still somehow surviving through it for a while, but will eventually fall in the process. Crow trying to turn this around, offer some support to Pale Horse, but he, I think he's realizing he can't really do this alone. You just need to be careful as there is a Void Spirit rotating over from the mid lane as well. Pale Horse will walk bottom, getting ready to farm some creeps instead. It's a dead tier one top though. This is uh, the power of Leshrac. It's why I, I I'm surprised the hero took so late into the patch before uh, people started picking him a bit more. In fact, uh, when I was casting Perfect World, Death Prophet was insanely popular as a mid hero, and as the tournament went on, uh, it just got replaced completely by Leshrac. Oh yeah, I mean this hero is very strong, and we saw, um, at least I saw for a while in North America, Sumail was spamming this hero an incredible amount. Bottom lane, goodbye Whisper. Boy, you just take a gush and then some uh, marksmanship procs, and you just take two shots and you're dead. Net worth wise, Sven is crushing this game, which, I mean, it's Hector. And, well, you know, nothing out of the ordinary there. Manages to find himself a very convenient Iron Talon in the process. Chris Luck trying to go for the rune, but it's not going to be successful. They do have the split earth, but he will be able to astral step that away. He's going to be fine. And in the process, bottom to catch Schofield. Pale Horse having a great time. He's four and zero. Uh, this is the one thing that I was worried about here, just uh, tearing through tower here on Canis. And Hector, this is the thing that he does every game. This is the one of the classic blunders he keeps falling for. He goes Midas, Midas. on his Mask of Madness. I've gone off about this again and again. Yeah, I was like, we talked about this in the last tournament. <laughs> uh, you're going a little bit too far here in the mid lane. Canis Volp is out of mana. We'll be able to back off, though. Hey, we, we, you talked about this a lot in the last tournament we casted, which is Hector always goes for this Bracer Power Treads Midas instead of going for the Mask of Madness build. I mean, then he just goes for Echo Saber instead. Yeah, I mean, when it works, it works, but the enemy team's playing fast. I mean, you just committed like 2,200 gold onto when I think that gives you, what, 40 attack speed? Yeah, 40 attack speed and turns an item into gold every so often. I mean, you get your Mask Madness with that money, you get yourself an Echo Saber with that money. If they start taking the fight to you, you're done. And that's exactly how Leshrac likes to play. I mean, he just ran at that mid tower there. And that's kind of how Drow wants to play in this game too, right? She's just going to sit behind the Leshrac um, if they decide to go fight. Whenever they have Ravage up, I think they're very strong as a five man. Yeah, it's so hard to get onto their backline when they have Clockwork, when they have Tusk, and they have Tithe Hunter sitting in between you and the Drow Ranger. They're looking for mid lane. They're pushing in, doing some damage. Tide Hunter just chilling bottom. Gremlo is level eight on this Tide Hunter. They're going to TP in the Clockwork. He's only level five, but here comes the Snowball, does catch him. Split Earth is there, and goodbye, Earth Spirit. You are not escaping that. And this should be a mid lane push coming out as a result from Arkosh. I mean, Kane is Volpus. He's still got a little bit of uh, Edict still to go. No fortification available with the Draw Ranger. They get themselves a tier one mid. Two towers down. Bottom. Ooh. Catch the Void Spirit. No level six on Tusk, though. So, not able to hit him with that Walrus Punch. Can't hold him to place just yet, but yeah, you know, like you said, two towers gone. Map control now held. Uh, the space that Hector has to farm in the map is decreased. He's gonna have to hold his triangle for now because his jungle is just so easy to invade. Well, the triangle is not even safe now either. Once you lose this mid lane tower, like once top and mid are gone, this access point is no longer safe for for the dire. Like Sven actually can't like reliably play in the triangle unless he has multiple heroes uh, protecting him. 
Yeah, I mean, they'll probably get vision up there. Ooh, hook shot, bottom, goat. He's been soul bound, but there's no follow up. They want to go for the double roar, but they're not letting it tether. And they're going to go and turn around. A great silence comes in from Schofield. A follow up silence as well from Stinger. But there's the ravage from Gremlo as he stuns down three, two heroes dead. They're going to turn on to Stinger as well. Kane as Volp is going to close the gap, gets himself a double kill. And this is the damage from Arkosh we were talking about. Nah, Arkosh, they got the team fight. They got safety numbers. I'll give them that. But while they do this, Hector, he's farming, man. He knows exactly what it takes to win this game. Sure, he went the minus, but he's just going to make victory for his team so much more sweet when they cleaves them all down. Third tower is going to fall soon, though. Uh, they are immediately TPing their team in bottom because they know they cannot afford to lose this last outer tier one tower. So they will go ahead and be forced to back on out. Did you... Right. I thought he was going to leave the bounty in that whisper for a moment. <laughs> clear up this catapult. Just bait quick. him, you know, wait for someone to walk up and try and take it. Hey man, that's dangerous. The clockwork could just hook shot in to then take it. Don't want to do that against him. Go with some mad lad. I mean, dude, Gremlo is... He doesn't have a lot of farm, right? He, he is sitting at like 4,200 net worth, which isn't super impressive, but he has level 10 with four points in Kraken Show, the hero that you cannot really initiate on. He just walks at them. I, I mean, this hero is very tanky. They're going to go for it anyway. A beautiful shards block. Look at Hector. His hands in the air. He can't do anything. A Yule's coming out. Gremlo stunned up. No rabbits, but the hook shot on the backside does catch two. Candace Volpa's falling very low. The Magnetize does end up skinning him off. And now Pale Horse in some serious trouble as the roar comes through. A beautiful fight here from Beast Coast as they find three. It's about to be a fourth as they're going to be able to stun up Crow as well. Double kill for Whisper. A great boulder comes on through, catching that clockwork. He's able to get some beautiful body blocks there from Schofield. That's going to be a five-man wipe going their way and Beast Coast finding some momentum. Yeah. They take that momentum and they go to take this tier one tower in the mid lane. Map control back on their side and 4K net worth up now. 2200 swing. Four or almost 5,000 XP swing for Beast Coast at that team fight, too. That's all they need is to take this fight without Tide having the Ravage. Yeah, that was that was interesting. Like, they, they try and pressure the triangle here without their spells. I feel like Arkosh really only wants to be five manning when they have Ravage and stuff, and that was that just seemed very awkward. Little Gremlin forgot his place and without uh, Ravage to fall back on the guy. Just can't get anything done. Now, he's going for Vladimir's off, and he understands he is an aura bot to the rest of his team. Yep. I mean, you need to have the Vlads for sustain on your hero anyway. It's incredible with the anchor smash if people try to get on you, especially against, like, you talk about the menagerie of the uh, Beast Master. If you just anchor smashes, you get so much health back. Bottom lane, they're trying to play aggressive here. Goat, looking for a hook shot. Will he find him? Whisper Jukes left. He does manage to connect, but where's the follow up? There's just no one there. TP's in the mid lane. We're canceled. Pale Horse in some trouble as. Chris Luck duking on, to, on top of him behind the tower. Does pop the blade mill, but in comes Tusk. Pale Horse still sitting pretty healthy. That's the second Astral Step. The Remnant does catch. Shards are there. Can Pale Horse get out? The multi-shot is there. He's got to dodge the disassembly. He gets him. Chris Luck finds the kill before giving his life in the process. A two-for-one trade around the map, but manages to take down the Drow Ranger. A big pickoff. Yeah, I mean, at the start of that team fight, uh, Earth Spirit, Schofield, he tried to stop and let Track from able to teleport and save his teammates there. So I think that was a major reason why Drow died. But Schofield may end up going down for it. But nice cancel of that teleport regardless. I think the team fight could have gone a lot worse for them. Yeah, Lush Track uh, had gotten down there. So they are going to go ahead and try and push this bottom lane, but you don't have your Lashrak, so this is a little bit bizarre. He is walking up into the dire triangle, which is a little bit spooky. Boulder does come out. It does connect. He's got to dodge a storm hammer, but it's not going to happen. The hook shot is there. Kane is Volp is falling so low. The cleave from Hector. Oh my lord, as he just melts two heroes. Gremlo, he's all by himself, surrounded by four. The Ravage is borderline useless as there's no follow up. They will be able to manage uh, a kill. He ends up turning it around. They're going to buy back on the clockwork. A nice uh, silence there, but Whisper closing the gap gets the roar. Hector going to get on top and just chews through the Tidehunter. They don't care. A beautiful Soulbind catches too. They pull back Pale Horse. It's a disaster for Arkosh. They lose four. The dieback on the clock. It's about to be a fifth as Crow has nowhere to go. 
Snowball buying himself some time, but once again, Beast Coast showing that they are better at taking these fights. And now up 19 net worth at 50 minutes into the game. And uh, as great as that Ravage could have been, I mean, you had the follow up with the silence with the multi shot, but Whisper, he was on your case. He was right there with War Roar ready. Drow Ranger was forced to get back immediately after that. Now, Ravage on cooldown for another 105 seconds. You're on the back foot yet again. And what could you possibly do against him without your big spells? Yeah, that was a very awkward engagement from. Arkosh, right? Because they're like, it looks like their like idea was to push bottom lane, get this tower, and then Canis Volpus just walks through the triangle without any vision. Like he has his one deep ward back here, but he just walks up right into Beast Coast territory, and then you're taking a super split fight, which is not good for your team. Yeah, he, Gremlin should have seen that one coming, but he's just uh, so hungry he can't keep focused on the game. Not surprising, given that Slax is their manager. He doesn't feed his team. Yeah, I've heard uh, after every game, um, they have to beg for food. And uh, most of the time, they say no. That's probably what uh, Kane is like doing, the fact that he does a stupid animal role play. Yeah, but whatever. Roshan, first one of the game, going to go over to Arkosh. A very nice pickup for them. They do do a lot of damage, obviously, with the help of uh, that tag team. But so far, I mean, suddenly a 12,000 gold lead. I mean, this game was pretty much even up until the 13-minute mark. And then suddenly, Beast Coast went two big fights back-to-back. -back, and Hector has 15,000 net worth now. He has the BKB. He's working on that Aghanim Scepter. He's only 400 gold away from Aghanim Scepter. Canis Volpus, he's going to get found here. A nice uh, pop there thanks to that. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter. That's the Aegis. Can they follow it up? Absolutely a ridiculous question. They have war. They have everything they need. Goodbye. Canis Volpus gets snagged by the Sven there. He's all of your damage right now. Without him, you can't do anything. You're forced to just run. Ooh, Void Spirit in super deep, but there is no saving because Pale Horse has to just run for his life. And Hector just chomps right through the side of Arkosh Gaming, finding two. Whisper looking for this Drow. He wants to find the Roar. He's just outside of vision, but they're going to keep rolling on forward. Do they finally catch? They get sights on Gremlo, but Pale Horse just going to go for the TP. Gremlo throwing his body at the enemies. Radiant should look no way to survive this if you're the tide hunter here. No, in fact, uh, even if you manage to survive this, there's no getting away from here. Teleport is on cooldown. He canceled it because he realized he was teleporting out of the exact spot that Sven was cleaving down the rest of his team. So he's going to go down. Does buy himself his team a little bit of time there, but barely even matters. Oh, Chris Luck, a little bit, uh, a little bit too ballsy in the mid lane as he just gets caught by a Yule Splitter. Huh? Just uh, goes down there on Chris Luck, I suppose. I don't know what that one was all about. Your team was on the other side of the map trying to chase down a Tide Hunter. Oh, space creating. <laughs> Kane is uh, a little bit closer to this Agnum Scepter, but I doubt it's going to make that much of a difference. I mean, he's just getting blown up in these team fights. Sven's got the 15 talent. He's got the Aghanim Scepter. It's just a matter of clicking. Beautiful Storm. shard block. They're going to get the hook shot onto Earth sh uh, or Shaker. Dude, that is hero is not even in this game. It's fine. They get the kill. They're going to keep going. There's a nice Yules. No split Earth to follow, but they have plenty of catch in the form of a BU. Ooh, double Storm Hammer. I don't know how that works. There we go. Now we know. <laughs> Hector pops the BKB, but no God Strength. You're damaged, sir. Where is it? They're going to turn around. They're going to chase Hector's 10 second BKB for what? In goes. Chris Luck, but he gets ravaged immediately into a split earth. It's an absolute disaster for the Void Spirit. Oh, no. That one is uh, Chris Luck protecting the president there. Yo. <laughs> Get down. <laughs> oh, no. All cost there. He keeps him alive. Alive to use his hand of Midas again. This is exactly why Chris Luck gets to be the min on Beast Coast. Yeah. Understand that, uh, it's all about Hector. That is a... Uh... Secret Service man, if I've ever seen. He's going, he'll get a purple heart up here at some point. Go, roared in the bottom lane. Ink swell the pop. That dude is stunned for an eternity. Whisper will find that kill. A smoke up immediately as well. Uh, they had vision of this, I believe, on the backside of that ward. So they do know that this has happened. You just need to be careful. Watch top lane as both Pale Horse and Tusk will make their way into the base. Canis Volpa is going to TP out and uh, Gremlo TP in one second. So they, are, they will all retreat. 
I'm not surprised. They realize that Beast Coaster are able to fight back. Uh, <laughs> you two cowards to be able to fight into them. You know what I'm super excited for? What? What are we excited for? For Sven to not be in every game of Dota 2. <laughs> I, I hope he just gets absolutely destroyed. Dude, I just hope they remove his cleave. I just want I just want to see that as like Sven no longer has cleave. Good luck. I, that's that would be hilarious to me. Completely destroy the hero and, and everything he's ever been, but it'd be funny to me. Hail horse mid lane, a uh, beautiful snowball save coming in from the tusk. Uh, but they catch him with the soul bind. You can't go anywhere on this draw. He's doing his absolute best to escape. Do they have the damage up onto the high ground? Hector, a hook shot comes out from Goat. They'll be able to shards block as well. He can't find the drow. He will take down the clockwork and a beautiful stun on over to the Lashrak who has no escape left. A double kill for Sven. And then they throw them, throw bodies at the Sven to try and get them off the Drow Ranger. But Leshrac is uh, the hero that's going to keep you in this game and be able to take these fights. Gremlo, you can stall, but there's a catapult there. You can't bring that down with your anchor smash, and you go down too. Wait, Chris Luck? Chris Luck, why do you keep doing this? This is like the fourth, this is the third time. How is he, was, Chris, uh, how is he dead again? For six seconds. From that gust. Oh no, pill. Oh my god, the saves from this tusk. Someone give Crow an award. Another snowball to save him, but he is super dead as in comes Hector. The cast range very balanced on this ability. And now Gremlo flies back, does have Ravage, but you have no damage coming in as there's no Lashrak and no Drow. Another Stormhammer double kill for Hector. They turn it around. The have the TP coming in. Can they finish this off? Their vessel's there. There's going to be the split. Earth does connect. Can they bring down the Beastmaster? It doesn't even seem like it. He's going to escape. Hookshot is there. Sven still has his BKB. The constant spirit vessels from Schofield are just too damn much. They're going to go ahead and TP out on Hector as his BKB is about to expire. Schofield will escape as well. Beast Coast with a swift disengage. They're out. And 16k net worth up now on Beast Coast. Find the Philosopher's Stone now on uh, the Void Spirit. There's a, a very clean team fight there. I mean, uh, these guys, they're, they're losing so little, uh, despite how far they're committing in. The only thing that uh, looked a little bit rougher was the fact that uh, Chris Locke is so far away from the rest of the team. I think he tried to stay on top of Drow during the duration of the silence. He wasn't able to do any damage, but Tusk came in at the end there and finished him off. And Lane once again. Go for a jank here. Oh, he misses the walrus punch. Chris Luck able to disengage. Drops a nice defensive remnant if he can get out. But look at the backside. In comes Hector. He has the god strength looking for his target. He pops it now. Stun up. Will find the clockwork. Try to cleave down Gremlo in the process. Not going to happen. A blink out from Tusk. He is going to be safe for the time being. But you have the vision. And Chris Luck get up there. Crow not going to be able to escape. Beautiful remnant from this void spirit. And the snowball just to buy himself a little bit of time. But... Pale Horse top lane, looking for the Earth Spirit, trying to do what he can to TP in from Canis Volpus as well. Yules into the split Earth. They will at least find one kill in the process, but this is a very difficult game here as you have three heroes down, no Ravage, and Hector knocking on the front door. Yeah, buy yourself a bit of time playing at that creep wave, but God's Train still available for another couple seconds. Now he's got the Solar Crest on him. He's cleaving through these towers. Uh, there's nothing they could do to defend from this one. They need Gremlin to be able to sit in front, spam that anchor smash, uh, stop some of this push, or at least slow them down a little bit. They can't threaten them with kills here. Yeah, I mean, they have Roar available. If Chris Luck catches a remnant, it's an easy Roar, which he actually went Kaya Sanj, not an item that we pretty much ever see built in, in Dota 2. Uh, but he's very tanky, I guess, so why not? He has Blade Mail and, and Assange. He's actually really tanky. Oh, someone has AC as well. Jesus. All right, this makes sense. Sven's got the AC. And uh, Solar Crest on the Beastmaster, just uh, spamming that on the Sven as he hits the towers here. It's a strategy you see quite often. They got popular in Invoker more than anybody else. Yeah. Rush the Spirit Vessel, Solar Crest, and carry hit the tower. It's a very, very, very quick Roche respawn. And with them taking the bottom tier to tower, the interesting of Arkosh decide to scout this. There is... An Earth Spirit sitting in the pit at the moment, knowing that it's not there. Arkosh might... Oh my goodness. If they snake this, they're going to get the vision from the player. It respawns. They know. 
The question is, can you do anything? Pale Horse in... So <laughs> he is so scared. Schofield is just rolling all over the map, trying to find these heroes, putting himself in harm's way as he's just going to get immediately blown apart. Five heroes here, but in comes Sven. Look at him go, dude. No BKB used quite yet, but a beautiful Soulbind holding the Sven in place. But there's the God Strike. There's the BKB, the double sword hammer. They get the drought. They get the Lashrak and triple kill for Hector on the Sven. This hero, very, 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 uh, very balanced hero. Yeah, they just call it GG. It's over. 24,000 net worth disadvantage. And with that Sven getting so farmed, they know the Roche respawn. There's nothing really that they can do here. There you have it, Beast Coast, uh, South American Giants managed to take the series 2-0 in two incredibly convincing games against Arkosh Gaming. Never stood a chance there. They, they had a good uh, start to that game, I'm not going to lie. Managed to get two towers there, securing the jungle, securing uh, the enemy side of the map, but couldn't get on Hector as he went for this Midas build and shut him down. You got to be able to punish the guy. Yeah, this is, I mean... Beast Coast, an incredibly strong team already to begin with, and giving Hector his Sven, a hero that he plays all the time, going 15-0-11. This is just... God, he's so good. <laughs> all right, calm down there, buddy. It, it's, uh... it's just like, there's just not much you can do in this game, right? You have the Drow Ranger, which had a decent start to the game, like we pointed out. They had good rotations from the Lashrak early, but uh, as soon as Sven has this Storm Hammer with an Aghanim Scepter, and a BKB, it's just, it feels very difficult to play this game as Arkosh. Yeah, I, I mean, Kinius, uh, he did his job and started a Leshrac. He took the towers, but uh, Gremlo got some decent ravages off for team fights, but just too hard at a certain point. Yep, that's about it. Um, that being said, we've got more Dota coming this way. It is only the uh, second series of the day. Beast Coast taking this convincingly 2 0 over Arkosh Gaming, and we've got. A classic NA show match coming up here. It's going to be four Zoomers versus the NA Open Qualifier Team, five-man Midas. So definitely stay tuned. Uh, we'll be back after just a short break, everyone.